I want to ask you something. Do you see it? What's happening out there? Experts say that we have until 2030 to avoid catastrophe. I don't want to give trillions and trillions of dollars. I don't want to lose millions and millions of jobs. In Sonoma County, winds gusting above 90 miles per hour, turbocharging the Kincaid fires spread through wine country. As 2019 ends, this year is likely to be one of the hottest on record. So what can we expect over the next decade? All of this with the global warming and the, that, a lot of it's a hoax. It's a hoax. I mean, it's a money-making industry, okay? The impacts of climate change are intensifying. Climate-related threats to Americans' physical, social, and economic well-being are rising. Long have I drifted through space and time in search of a presence like you. And now, here we are. You, Amoro, and myself. And who am I, you ask? Well, let me just say my legend runs as deep as the melting glaciers themselves. And somewhere between the ocean and the clouds I drift looking for one's devotion to ride the eternal circle of life. You see, time is not short. It can be sped up or slowed down, but never is it short. However, it is during those moments of slow and sped that the very Earth's winds and waters seem to shape our own reality. But for now, let me take you on a journey so you can see for yourself. Tomorrow we're hoping to ski some nice lines, um, hoping to kind of send some cool stuff, see what the conditions are like. Uh, now we've got camp set up right now with a nice little cozy fire going. And yeah, it's going to be super fun, super sick. It's going to be a good day. There's something different about being up here with gals instead of guys, for sure. I don't know what it is, but sometimes just skiing with some other ladies who shred is just a completely different vibe. And it's, I love it so much. And I, it makes me want to ski with them even more because, I don't know, it's just, it's great to see. And I love also just seeing other ladies get out and get on it. I don't know. Yeah. I just get really hyped when there's other gals around me that like want to do the same thing and like have stoke and are super excited for the day. It goes to prove that like you don't have to be anyone special to come out here. Like sure you can ski with the guys but like after you ski with the guys find some gals that like want to do the same thing and have the same mindset and are like you know what heck maybe we'll even go harder than the guys today because why? Because we can. Three, two, one, drop it. think that climate change isn't going to affect the ski and snowboard community is kind of ludicrous. <laughs> I mean, we rely on winter and cold temperatures and consistency 
and climate change is gonna derail all of that and that's gonna affect the economies of these communities that rely on outdoor recreation, especially in the winter. And that goes for forest fires too in the summer. If the forest fire seasons are getting really bad, which they have been, <laughs> that's gonna affect summer recreation as well. So every aspect of outdoor recreational communities and their economies are gonna be completely ruined. A thing is right when it preserves the integrity, stability, and beauty of the place it's in, and it is wrong if it tends otherwise. With that being said, for some of us, this is our place. We find beauty in the mountains, the trees are in its place, the snow is in its place, this is where it should be. With climate change, like we really don't want to risk that. Let's keep things like how it should be, keep the beauty, keep the aesthetic, and realize it's not just for us, it's for generations to come. And I mean, I know all of us probably won't have little shredders someday. So keep the stove and protect your earth, honey. Times have changed. The unsteady drift of the world has begun. Your system is flawed. Manipulation is required if you are to survive. The one they call Mother Nature will continue on, with or without you. This will be the difference between living for generations to come or that of dying too young. So I think for me, Snowboarding was kind of my first thing in the outdoors that I really fell in love with and for me it kind of sparked my my love for the outdoors and also made me aware of the changing climate and for me snowboarding is definitely my favorite place to be and I think most of my life revolves around trying to get into the mountains and I find myself you know if I have a homework assignment due I think most of my motivation for it is that I can ski during the weekend So when I think of the, the community around skiing and snowboarding, I think my first thoughts definitely go to my, my first year at college and every class you went into, you'd, you'd sit next to somebody and the first question that would come up is, oh, do you, do you ski or snowboard? And I think you make a lot of friends through this sport and I think a lot of the friends that you do make are very, very open and understanding. Like I notice I never feel I never feel very uncomfortable around people who ski and snowboard. They always feel very welcoming. I think that if snowfall decreased and if if skiing and snowboarding wasn't wasn't as likely to happen anymore, 
I think that those people would change and I think that losing those people in my life would be very disappointing and I think that a lot of us find time to hang out because of the amount of snowfall and being able to go ski powder and if that wasn't there we definitely wouldn't hang out as much and that'd be a bummer. You end up in snow, you end up on top of stuff, you end up falling. It's all worth it though. Dropping in 10. And they just went totally haywire. How many of you know that sometimes you can get a severe case of the stupid? I think I particularly like camping out here because it really, I mean, you're exposed a little more to the elements, which is kind of cool. Uh, so it's definitely, it's a different experience for sure than a normal ski day, which is neat. Not everyone gets to experience this. And so it's really neat to be out here, just us. And I mean, it's literally so silent here. There's no noise except me talking right now. In the long run and in the end, we're fighting to continue like what we're doing right now, like to continue to be able to do that. It's kind of scary to think that it's getting warmer. That's the reality. 
this planet is getting a lot warmer and so like snow can't really survive in some places, which is unfortunate. I mean, it really just doesn't allow for people to ski for as long during the year. I think that's probably one of the biggest parts of it. It's hugely important to me to be able to ski for the rest of my life with my friends and climate change could change the way I ski for the rest of my life. I mean, it's just gonna be always looking back at the good old days. I mean, there's just gonna be a constant state of it getting worse and worse. And we're always gonna think about, oh, you know, in 2020 when we went up there and it was just blower powder, and it will, we'll be talking about it, it'll be like four inches. To me, it seems like the people that I see touring all think of skiing is still a special thing. And it seems like a lot of the people I see at the resort, it's like, it's no biggie. It's like the family vacation. Nobody really understands that it's a crazy thing. To me, to me, I mean, you put boards on your feet and you are skiing down the side of a mountain. I think that's pretty crazy. And the people that I've seen up here are super appreciative of that. And they understand that you are loving and compassionate for that too. So it's, it's easy to bond with people up here is really what I've noticed with the skiing community and climate change is really gonna change skiing for the rest of my life. It's gonna change skiing for the rest of my friends' lives. It's gonna change skiing for the rest of everyone's life. I mean, okay, I'm just naming names at this point, but it's gonna make everything so unpredictable that I will never really know when I can get out and it's just gonna make everything a lot more painful. And I really, I think it would be more effective for us to just take care of our planet when we can, even if it might be too late, just so we can maybe, possibly, possibly protect our winters. trick I've done today? 
Um, I'm a big fan of spread eagles. That's it. <laughs> big old, huge That'll spread do it. eagles. So, expectations for tonight? Um, dreams of spread eagles. <laughs> Yes, Ben! I don't care, it's a double dare. I ain't scared, you best beware, you best beware. It's alright, she's in my side. I got all night, so just sit tight, so just sit tight. Cause she lets her hair down. She drives me wild. That was insane. It was great. Those turns at the bottom were so sick. So good. I got some big ass face shots. So, this is where my story comes to an end. I do, however, want you to know that when it's all gone, do not blame me, for I saw all along. What was there, and soon, to be gone. Those glaciers upon which I was brought. Those mountains covered in a blanket of white so many saw it. Those rivers which flowed and twisted like the wind in the sky. These were the things you did not see with your so human eye. Now I'm left, defeated and to rot. But I will not be so swift like the erosion of rock. For I am the spirit guardian of these lands, a protector of them all. Now, as you pass me on the way by, back to your so human place. I will smile towards you, for I know your place. Just know salute me once more, for I will see you next time, old friend, when it snows beautifully to come around full circle once more.
So this morning we got up onto the ridge as early as we can could, which really wasn't that early. It was like 12 because we were tired. And um, I took one turn and popped out. Are you kidding me? It just came right off. We're here to enjoy each other's company too. Party four. I've already gotten pissed at Wes like good. four times. Sick. Yeah, we've gotten pissed at each other a couple and times. like 12 hours. A couple good fights already. Um, yeah, you should see the other guy. I think it's really fun skiing with all boys. Just, I don't know, they kind of push you and... And you know, you can fart around them, which is great. You know, that's always a good perk. Um, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and they just kind of like... They have a little lower risk tolerance, or a higher risk tolerance. <laughs> Wait, so, what? That's impossible. Up there. I'm a chicken. <laughs> I'm known for it. Wave! Hi! His name is Sam. We're twins. And today is our birthday! Happy birthday! Love you. Well, this morning, Wes and I went and grabbed our McChickens. Not bad. Oh, this day is freaking sick. It's powder. It's actually really sick. I mean... It's deep. Oh, why did we do that? <laughs> we got a bird up in there. Actually, I can tell you what that is. I, that's a downy woodpecker, guys, I think. I can't 100% see it, but it looks like downy woodpecker. That is what I learned in my education. There's a downy woodpecker in that tree. Be a professional snowboarder, they said. Be sick, they said. <laughs> it is sick. Today is a beautiful day. You got a lighter? What's on the agenda? You got a lighter? We're gonna ski lots of Sick lines, hopefully. It looks like it's gonna be a really clear day, so hopefully it'll be good lighting. We got up earlier today, so we'll probably get a few more runs in. But first, Spencer and I are on a journey to collect water. 